The Iranian armed forces began to make significant investments in ground-based air defense systems in the 1980s, beginning in the Iran-Iraq war with acquisitions of a network of Chinese systems built around the HQ-2 a derivative of the Soviet S-75 which provided the country with advanced high-altitude targeting capabilities. Following rapprochement with the Soviet Union in 1989, Iran would in the 1990s acquire second-hand Soviet-built S-200D long-range air defense systems with unrivaled 300 km targeting ranges, which for the first time provided significant coverage across its airspace. The powerful radar coverage of the systems also more than compensated for serious losses to radar installations from Iraqi strikes during the Iran-Iraq war. Iranian air defenses nevertheless remained well behind the cutting edge, as Russia from the early mid-1990s began to export its new S-300PM family of systems that combined diverse arrays of complementary missile classes with long-range targeting capabilities and high mobility in an unprecedented way. With the large majority of new S-300PM series systems produced in Russia being exported to Russia in the 1990s, Chinese demand for the systems declined significantly in the 2000s as the country began to operationalize increasingly advanced variants of its HQ-9 system, which quickly came to boast advantages over its Russian counterparts particularly in terms of electronics. Iran would in 2007 place its first order for high-mobility long-range Russian air defense systems, namely the S-300PM U-1 system. These orders were welcome to help compensate for the sharp decline in Chinese demand. The S-300PM U-1 was nevertheless significantly less capable than the S-300PM U-2 sold to China the previous decade, or the new S-400 operationalized in Russia itself, but still represented a revolutionary improvement to Iran's network. In 2010, however, the new administration of Russian President Dmitry Medvedev stopped the sale of S-300s before any deliveries had been made, resulting in a significant diplomatic fallout between the two countries. Although Iran had acquired Russian Tor M1 short-ranged systems with advanced anti-cruise missile systems in the early 2000s, it was otherwise unable to make significant acquisitions. While the Soviet Union had proven to be a reliable supplier to Iran, post-Soviet Russia would prove far more susceptible to Western pressure, and cancelled multiple arms deals in the 1990s including license production of T-72 tanks, while also ceasing to re-equip the Iranian Air Force with MiG-29 and Su-24M fighters as the USSR had been doing. Moscow took these steps despite having significant surpluses of the systems it was supplying to Iran and at a time when its defense sector was desperately in need of revenues, which indicated the tremendous degree of influence which the Western world retained over the country. This was key to ensuring that Western bloc states and Israel would retain options to attack Iranian targets with relatively little resistance. Russia notably lifted its restriction on selling S-300 systems in 2015 following the signing of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action Nuclear Agreement, a year after Moscow's relations with the West declined over the Ukrainian conflict, with Russia supplying Iran with more capable S-300PM U-2 systems from April to October 2016. Little is known about the customization of the systems Iran did receive. But they are known to use 96L6E target acquisition radars, 30N6E2 target engagement radars and 64N6E2 battle management radars.
Alongside S-300s, it was revealed by Russian sources in 2020 that Iran had acquired the Rezonin's Ne long-range radar system which provided situational awareness over much wider areas than any other radar system in the country. Deputy CEO of the Rezonin's Research Center, Alexander Stuckhylan, disclosed in August that year. At the beginning of 2020 this radar identified US F-35 planes and tracked them. The radar's personnel were transmitting information, including the routes of F-35 flights, in clear, thus confirming that it was reliably tracking the planes. Thank you.